Welcome back to Cancer and Peace. My name is Sean Stewart, and I'm facilitating a conversation with Peter Scalzo, our host, who's been on an 18-year cancer journey. And today we're going to close up Lessons in Job. We've done two podcasts on this, and we're going to finish out today with some final thoughts on uh, this uh, really cool story. It's an interesting story because it really describes quite a bit of our human journey and suffering. And to tee that up a little bit, I just want to just speak to a second. It's like there's a westernized concept of, mm. and as we see it pervasive here in, in the, I think in America, and especially the Western church. And that is this idea that suffering is bad and uh, finding pleasure and comfort is good. And I just think that's a, um, a false concept. I think we're speaking against that uh, throughout this Job uh, discussion because Job uh, had all the comforts. And really what was taking place here was God wanted Job's heart. And God wanted Job to really know him. And so he allowed him to go through some of the greatest suffering so that he would really have his heart and to know him. And that's this book closes out with uh, an interaction with God and Job. And so last time we left off with the friends had uh, inappropriately accused Job of sinning and Job had defended himself and expressed himself. And we wanted to talk a little bit about Job's feelings as he was going through suffering and what appropriate feelings and what wasn't so healthy and how God addresses him and to close this out a little bit. And so I'm going to, I'm going to throw it at you, Peter, a little bit about the feelings and what's appropriate. You've had your own journey with feelings and expressions yeah. to God mm-hmm. and just we'll kick or kick this around a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we've discussed the role of emotions in this process, but I think for me personally, this was God's way of unlocking me, God's way of, of showing me that I really didn't know who I was. It was in suffering that, and in recovery, I got into recovery because of suffering and pain, but that God was able to, to show me who I, who I really am. Um, and so I think for me, being bottled up in ICU after this surgery that I had where they said we couldn't get the cancer out, really, we got what we could see, but there's, you know, no such thing as clear margins and you're going to need a high powered chemo, but you can't get it because your kidneys have been damaged. Um, and so you got a 5% uh, survival rate going on. And I think that, that I was a, an individual who didn't express tough emotions with God. And so when my buddy brought down, Johnny D brought down that journal that was empty and he said, I don't know why, but God wanted me to bring this journal down to you. And I picked it up. I I like to write. That helps me to express myself and to be in t- get in touch with things inside of me. So I was able to write down all the anger and the fear, lots of fear and the sadness. Um, <coughs> the, the What I felt was f- failure and disappointment, all of that. Write all those emotions out. And it was probably the the first time that I have ever been that real with God. I always kind of was like, yeah, I'm joyful, this and that, but never those tough, tough emotions. And just the incredible value now, as I look back, but even then, the freedom and the healing that I got from just revealing what was going on inside me, having permission to be completely honest and real with God was so transformative in my journey with him. I think I grew in my relationship unbelievably, That and it would have never happened unless I was in a situation like that. Um, and so the the benefit was just, I mean, it didn't feel like that at all because I, I didn't want to go on. I mean, my yeah. my feeling was, was not that I didn't want to, I couldn't. So I was in a place where I said, I can't do any more. I don't have anything left. So just let me pass right here. Uh, I can't imagine doing a recovery right now physically. You know, that's how I felt. Yeah. I put down emotionally, spiritually, and physically, I'm done. I'm spent. I have nothing left. There was I was on below a. And that's a... 
really healthy expression is what I think you're saying. Those That was a healthy way of processing your emotions. It yes. was healthy to write down what you felt, uh, why mm-hmm. you felt it, where you were at in this journey. Um, did you have any unhealthy expressions in your, that you would uh, put out there? Cause I think there's a part of Job stories yeah. that he's expressing those, expressing those same emotions yeah. of, Hey, I can't go for I'd rather just be squashed like a bug. I'd like this to be over because yeah, I don't have anything left to keep going forward. I mean, my thought on it was, I felt like, um, if I could give a kind of like a word picture of like, you know, sitting down with the Lord close on a couch together and just telling Jesus what's going on inside of me. And I think the expression on his face would, would be one of acceptance and like, okay, Mm -hmm. I get it. You know, I understand. Um, I experienced pain and suffering on earth also, and I understand where you're coming from and go ahead and let it out kind of thing. In other words, and then, you know, I was at a place where I was weeping about it and I really felt like Jesus was weeping with me. Like there was a total identification of my feelings with his. Um, and so I think the issue was I didn't stay camped out in the place of tough emotions. I acknowledge them. I recognized them, but they were, they were leading me into it was, it felt great to express them. It felt, it felt wonderful, but I didn't stay there. I needed a place to go to from there. And that's when I believe, uh, God gave me all, all the revelations that came through his, his word. So I had a place to camp. And does that make sense? I think so. I'll rephrase the question here. So, and that is, so if you would have stayed in just expressing sorrow and, Mm -hmm pain and your feelings, uh-huh. you may have, uh, be camping in a place of hopelessness. Correct. And, and depression. Yes. And I think I would have ended up being like clinically depressed kind of thing. Um, and probably were it's in some ways in the deep depression of some type. Yes. A period of time. Yeah. It, but I think that, that I, I, for me, the big thing was I've never expressed these emotions before, and now I've done it. And to reveal was really the first place of healing for me. It was amazing. So I want to juxtapose that yes. with Job's story a little bit because this okay. is going to be, to me, that I see a fascinating parallel. I really don't know that mm-hmm. I've thought about it until now. But um, what got Job in trouble, I think, a little bit, not that he was in uh, in deep trouble, but was that – well, let's start with his friends. What got his friends in trouble was they assumed something about God that wasn't true and about the situation that wasn't true. And the thing about God was that God was punishing Job. Mm -hmm. Um, And so God was coming to be a God of punishment for something that he must have done wrong. And so that's why this happened. And God's like, that's not what's going on here. God, remember in the start of the story was, have you considered my servant Job? There's none more righteous than him Mm -hmm. on earth. And so they assumed the opposites. They assumed something wrong about Job and what God's motives were. Mm -hmm. And Job made a similar, uh, he didn't make a similar, he made a mistake in that he also spoke from assumption uh, about God. And that was an assumption that, um, that if he could speak to God, if he could make his case, um, that if he could, uh, be able to present the fact that he hadn't done anything wrong, that maybe God would relent, uh, because, uh, but he just knew there was no way to have that court, uh, with God. And so, yeah. Do you think Sean, just sorry to interrupt, but that there was a sense of Job raising his fist saying, but I'm innocent God. Yes. There you see yeah, that. I see you that. see that. Yeah. I'm innocent God. Yeah. And my reason for reasons for what I want to juxtapose with yes. your journey is that mm-hmm. I think your journey of getting to hope and peace mm-hmm. was the moment you expressed your real emotions. So you expressed mm-hmm. where you were at in your life. 
And the next thing you did is you started writing down truths right, 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 about right. God, the things that you right. didn't know that were truth. Right. And this is such an important part of the journey. I think for your journey of healing is that uh, in your journal, you started writing down all the things that you knew that were true. Mm-hmm. And where there was a bit of an error with uh, in the Job story with Job, and that I think God, God spoke to Job and he said, what you said has been more true than your friend's. But he questioned Job because Job had an assumption that was still false. And that was that Job thought he understood um, that if he could prove his innocence, that the suffering should end. Right. And God was like, were you there when I laid the foundations yeah. of the earth? Do you really have understanding? Is it yeah. is, is it the way you think it is? Right. Were you there? Uh, do, have you seen the storehouses of snow or <laughs> yeah. hail? And it just goes on and on and on. And he goes on for yeah. a long time of all the things Job doesn't understand. And the whole point of going through that list was to so, show Job that he didn't have all the great truths mm-hmm. of God and he didn't have a full understanding of truth. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I wanted to juxtapose it a little bit and not to make you more righteous than Job, because <laughs> I don't think you are. <laughs> I know I'm not. I didn't, <laughs> but the, the point that my eyes, this is an issue. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about a cancer and peace podcast. Yeah. So where do you find peace is um, don't make assumptions. Mm-hmm. Go to what you know is true and allow there to be great mystery well, and where there is mystery and trust because God's asking for trust. I mean, Scazzaro, just two points about this where he, I think, I think he just nails it. And, you know, talking about the wall, hitting the wall, this of course was the wall for me, but where it, where it's an opportunity to show my own brokenness, like Job had to face his brokenness, which is, Hey, I have you figured out God. Yeah. <laughs> and the, and the holy unknowing as Pete, Pete Scazzaro calls it this, this mystery of God. And of course, he supports it with scripture, but I think that that's really true with me is that God used cancer to show me my brokenness yeah. um, and to get me to be real about my emotions. I was a fraud about my emotions. I didn't show the realness of them. And my wife would at the time would say that, but you know, I was more robotic and not feel. And, but then also that, um, I'll, I'll never know, none of we, we won't know why God allows certain things that happen to us, you know, in our, in our lives. So, so yeah, the, the overarching premise for me has always been, there's been a couple of things. The first thing is I can't, but Jesus can, because it was too much for me. That journey was too much for me. I couldn't do it. And then the second thing is, um, can I surrender and trust? Hmm. Even if I don't understand what God is doing at all. Like Job didn't get to see the scene of God and Satan. He didn't know any of that. He just knew life was ripped away from him. Everything. I would have been angry too, just ripped away. His health, his wealth, his marriage, his reputation, everything ripped away. And, um, And so dealing with that and then... You know, knowing that he 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 performed well, didn't he? Like I made a covenant with my eyes. I did this with my yes. books. I mean, those are good things to say. Those are good performances. I think that's what I kind of said to God too, to a certain degree. Was hey, come on, Lord. I mean, I've been a Christian all this time. I'm an elder in the church. I'm a f- Christian father, and aren't I performing well enough? Why am I being going through this? Yes. In a sense, feeling punished. Why? So we I, see something that's big in the story, and that yeah. is uh, uh, God is less interested in our sinlessness than he is in us developing intimate relationship with him. Right. Is that God's purposes were something so much different than what Job had thought. Mm-hmm. And Job thought he understood what the, you know, what the points were in life. And God was like, no, it's, it's not the points. Um, and you see even in, in Job's Great point. Yeah. interaction, you see Job never, well, I don't remember it as in, there's 41 chapters just like that, I think in the book or in the, in, yeah, the book of Job. And I don't remember him ever accusing Satan of bringing no. 
uh, this upon him. It's God has afflicted me. And mm-hmm. it's a half truth in that God right. allowed it. Right. Um, and so that half truth, Job wanted to go make the case with God, but I've lived a good life. I've uh, been upright. Isn't that what's required? And God's like, you don't understand. Mm. That's not that's not what life is about. It's not about living the good life. It's not about uh, living sinlessly. Uh, there's something greater here of greater importance. And once we wrap our arms around that, there's deep trust relationship. And then that peace that we talk about all the time of peace. Peace comes when uh, we relax into the arms of someone who loves us even through our pain, in our pain, no matter what's going on, there's much greater peace there than could I live sinlessly enough? Because as each of us, as I look at my own life, the thing that's most shocking about this is if it's about um, the fact that this person here was the most righteous um, and affliction came still, aren't I even in bigger trouble? Because I can't make the same claims that Job did. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my own life. I don't have the ability to make that claim. And so if each of us have to do that, if we have to live that perfectly, then we're in deep, dude, there's no peace in that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I love Paul on this and I know we're going to do something on him, but you know, on, on the one hand, he's writing and telling churches be an imitator of me you know, cause I, I do this Christian walk so well. And then towards the end of his life, he says, you know, Jesus came to save sinners of which I'm the chief one. Yeah. So it's this sinner saint concept. Scazzaro points that out too, but it's the sinner saint thing. So it's not about sinlessness at all. Yes. And I think this book yeah. highlights Job's, Job's lack of sin for right. purposes of actually making that point right, is that there's right. still a problem here right? and there's no peace in yeah, sinlessness. Yeah, it's a great point, Sean, because I think if there was something unrighteous, let's say, just to use the word righteous, unright- about Job, we could always point at that and saying, oh, well, God inflicted him because of X or Y. And you're right. The point of Job is that it's this did come on him for you know, any kind of punishment or anything like that. But th- God had a whole nother reason that yes. he allowed the enemy to do this to him. <clears throat> I think this brings us to that part of the story where mm. Job uh, does, God does come and speak to Job. Mm. And um, this is, you know, when, when God comes, he, he questions Job. Hey, will you stand up? And answer my questions. Yeah, gird your, yeah. Yeah, gird yourself. <laughs> which I don't know, what gird, what does gird it, mean? These like days? pull up your pants or yeah. whatever. Gird, <laughs> come on, let me see you, man. You know, be a man. Yeah. And then stand up and let's talk. I, eye to eye kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And Job's like, oh my God. So he asked this, these series of questions that are yeah. unanswerable by any man. Yeah. And Job says, hey, I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, forgive me, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a punchline that was here that Job gets to say after that. And uh, I want you to put the punchline there because I think it's such an important yeah. uh, item out there. It really is wonderful. Yeah. And I can, I think those of us who have turned to God made that choice, including yourself and just all of us in our times of pain and suffering. But Job says, uh, I... I have heard about you, or I, um, you know, I I know about you, but now I have seen you. So there's this this sense of this much more intimate look that he gets now into his he- heavenly Father. You and know? I would like to say that as a word of encouragement for mm-hmm. anybody who's listening to this podcast that as suffering comes. We move from the intellectual, and I think that's probably one of the biggest issues in the Western world is we intellectualize, um, especially in uh, Western Christianity, that we've intellectualized uh, the Christian faith. And God's calling us into an experiential journey with him. And so it moves from, I knew and understood, you know, the Bible and things that people have told me about you to... I've experienced 
and been in your presence, God. I um, have come to an understanding and a belief and I can trust. And this is where real peace is at because peace Mm -hmm. isn't in intellectual understanding. Peace is in knowing intimately and having that deep relationship. That's Mm -hmm. where real peace is at. And I think that's the point of this book is to see Job's journey from, you know, he had a transactional relationship. That's what Satan accused him of to a journey through suffering to seeing and really knowing God and being able and willing to embrace the mystery of God on top of that Mm. to such a degree uh, that he, you know, God, you know, that there's a closeness and God brings great restoration back into his life. Yeah. He gives him everything back really. Right. With even more more. and more. Yeah. I mean, I think, it's a great point, Sean, and I think part of it is that he gets to he gets exposed to other parts of God that he didn't know about before or wouldn't have unless he went through this time of extreme poverty. I think about we've talked about this before, but like even in my own case of you know having to go through divorce and basically living in an eight hundred square foot apartment having my health taken from me and, you know, all going through that whole thing and not being able to practice law anymore and just being in this, this apartment with seven banker boxes <laughs> labeled like divorce and taxes and cancer. <laughs> one just was closed, right? That was one of your dresser, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how being stripped down like that and then, but then getting to know God as sort of my all in all, like, can I be stripped down of all material stuff, including my health, and still be joyful in my higher power? Can I, is that still possible? And I know now, emphatically, the answer is yes. That that's what's truly important in my life. I mean, and I'll go to the mat with that, is my relationship with God. And so I think that's a that is a really difficult lesson to learn, but a really profitable one for me personally. You know, and I think Job would probably say the same thing that, it, or a similar thing such as, hey, I had everything taken away from me, but God, God, God revealed himself in amazing ways. I think me. what you just shared is something I've been pondering for a while mm. myself. And it's this, yeah. and you don't know until you walk through that valley. Mm-hmm. Um, but the question of is knowing God without any of the assets, without any of the other relationships, without health, without certainty about tomorrow, is there still joy in that? Is there mm-hmm. still peace in that? And if the answer is yes, I think you probably have real peace. Mm -hmm. Um, If the answer is I still have to have those things, um, I probably have a ways to go on the journey. And God reveals that to us by allowing us to go through that Mm -hmm. and to grow through that and to see that he is enough. And that's where we find real peace because he reveals that. And he took Job through that journey because he couldn't intellectualize that. He actually had to walk through that valley. And I think the end of this book is a picture of the restoration of man, of restoration of us. Uh, It's a picture of that in such a big way that God's uh, kingdom ahead, what he has for us is greater than we can think or ask. And we see that in Paul's writing. It's like what we, what's ahead of us is greater than we can think or ask. Uh, but we have to go through the valley of suffering uh, to find that and to know that. But on the other side, there is something. There's great hope. And when you can see that hope, even when everything's been stripped away, mm-hmm. wow, what a great place to be in peace. Yeah, and the the concept of going through deep pain and suffering and and having endurance, let's say, and sort of coming out of it, I think is is appealing, is shown through all through the scripture, many characters, but is appealing 
to everyone. I mean, if you, I mean, there's so many shows, let's say of a, of a guy who's on the, going through battle and he has great losses. And so, but then he comes out of it and there's something that appeals to us that while there's something unique here that this person knows because of what they've been through that I don't know. Right. And I don't, I'm, you could phrase it better than me, Sean, you're better than I am at that. But I was thinking, I think that's what the appeal for my journey is for a lot of people. Like I have to speak in my church next week and it's a rather large church, but it's this, you know, here's this guy that went through an 18 year cancer struggle. He was told twice to go home and call hospice. I wonder what that's, you know, what's this, what makes this guy tick? What's yeah. that like? You know, any of us who who know of somebody that's been through something really difficult, we want to hang out and find out, how, how'd you do it? What was it like? You know, what'd you learn? I think if you look at any great story, yeah, and if you look at how story writers, even for uh, fiction stories, if the story starts out, um, at a, at a good place and only has a trajectory of up, yeah. uh, there's almost no interest in the story. Yeah. A great story, uh, comes from great hardship. Um, and great hardship brings about, um, you know, the ability to show courage, uh, hope, joy, love, hardship is all uh, what brings yeah. about all those great parts of any good story. And if you only have a trajectory, trajectory of up um there's no plot and likely no love um because it's all performance right 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 and it's it's a very interesting thing that for us the best stories that we follow are those about people who've gone through great hardship and have come out the other side mm -hmm. or have given their all in the midst of great hardship mm -hmm. those are the stories that we value and it kind of just shows something that we don't fully understand, you know, the importance of suffering or the whys anyway. And this story is a lot about God telling us, hey, you don't know all the whys, Job. And I think it's a story for us, too, is you're not always going to know the why, but trust him hmm. and uh, and speak truth about where you're at. Speak truth about your emotions. That was fine speaking and feeling those emotions, but stick to truth. And that's what I love about your story, Peter, is that when you went through the biggest valley that you went through, you expressed your emotions and you started writing down truths. Mm -hmm. And as you wrote down those truths, it helped bring you out of the other side of the valley. It isn't what healed you of cancer. No. Um, because you're still in a cancer battle journey even. Um, but it brought you out the other side in the story of life. And your life. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. It's I how I put it is this my diagnosis and prognosis didn't change. But my room of darkness became a room of light. Oh wow. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, that's how I like to say it. Yeah. And it's and you know, it wasn't this like, isn't Peter wonderful? This was survival, baby. This was how am I gonna survive? We both know it's not Peter is wonderful. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was, this was, how can I survive? And I found out not only can I survive, but I can even thrive to a certain degree. Yes. Even with all the losses, like the, you know, I don't yes. talk about having to catheterize myself six times a day or I just right mentioned it podcast, now, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, just the incredible amount of losses, Yeah, and, but, but just the amazing, what it's yeah. Of course, I had, was walking into church one day and a guy said, you must be a bigger sinner than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Back to that concept. But yeah, it's just this sense of God. You know, sometimes I do think I have this rebellious streak in me or toughness, but yeah. you know, God, this is how God fashioned me. He fashioned you in your way, Jack in his way, but we all experience pain and suffering that God yeah. brings. I love that saying you just said again, um, 
you know, yeah. your prognosis. My diagnosis and prognosis didn't change, but my room of darkness turned into a room of light. That yeah. is such a yeah. powerful testimony. I think yeah. that's the story we see yeah. closing out Job is that um, mm-hmm. it's not that you have full understanding, but you see and understand uh, the truth about who God is in your life now, and you can find peace in that. Mm-hmm. And that's the light you're talking about is the peace that God is in control and he's using the suffering for purposes that are, you don't even fully understand. You don't know where it's going or how, but you're willing to step into that light every day. I mean, I, I wanted ministry. And as you know, I wanted a hot fudge Sunday ministry. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Um, we sit around, we eat hot fudge Sundays. Yes. I'm all about that. <laughs> that's not what I got though, Sean. <laughs> And here you are, Cancer and Peace. Yeah. Cancer and Peace Ministry. Uh, and those of us who uh, get to interact with you get to really share the joy of this can sound the joy of your suffering, the, yeah. the joy that's coming from your suffering. Yeah. Not joy of having to suffer. And, but. and I get there's so many people like guests we've had on or guests that are coming. Yeah. Or other people that I talk to where I get to share, they've also experienced the joy in their suffering. So I get to, I get to experience with them and I can relate, Yeah, but it's wonderful to hear the different stories, the different perspectives, you know, it's rich. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to to misspell or miss misstate that it's not joy of suffering, but the joy that's the product of suffering, Mm -hmm. uh, the backside. And that's that verse, you know, when trials come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. So that's the word you use. And this is part of Christ's character. For the joy set before him, he endured Mm -hmm. the cross. And you're enduring cancer. And those who are listening to this podcast, many of them cancer patients are enduring the suffering of cancer. And I think the hope and the peace that's on the backside of this is that there's a joy that God has set before you. Embrace it. Right. So that's our closeout for Job. And we'll uh, have more conversations in other areas. But uh, thanks for listening today. For more resources, go to cancerandpeace.com. You'll see Peter's book. You'll see Pete Scazzaro. You mentioned him on the podcast today and several other CR. Yeah. So uh, check it out. And uh, thanks for listening. Thank you.